In this video we're going to look at trenchless technologies. Um, as I mentioned before there are two different types of main types of installing pipelines. One is that you can dig trenches which we've looked at in the previous videos and the other one is you can drill. Now trenchless technologies are relatively new. They've been around for maybe 20, 20 years. They've only become popular in the last 15 years or so, 10 to 15 years. And that is because the technology is just getting better and better and less and less expensive. So the advantages of trenchless technology is that there's no above, well there's very little above ground um, disturbance. Um, so you're not having people going down into the holes, there's no shoring required. It can be less expensive in terms of not having to reinstate so much area as you do with trenching, but directional drilling can be more expensive because you're using more expensive materials and the plant is a specialised plant which makes it more expensive as well. So there's a balance there um, and it comes down to what the situation is, whether um, trenchless technology or trenched technology is the best way to go. Um, the disadvantages is you can have the plant at one site, uh, one location for quite a long time and that can cause disturbance to the people close by. Um, and once again it can be cost, it can be more costly than trenching. So the main uses are under structures, roads, um, in urban areas where you don't want to dis disturb the footpaths and the, the berms and stuff like that, under streams, difficult geology where it would be very hard to um, trench your way through it, um, uh, and other uses as well, and it's becoming more and more prevalent. So directional drilling is the most common way of um, trenchless technology and you have a flexible rod with a motorized or shaped head and so what you've got there is you've got the rod there you've got a machine there sort of turning the rod and the rod is flexible to a point so you drill a pilot hole and then you um, get a back reaming tool which will um, make the hole a bit bigger you pull it back back reaming all the time uh, you may well be pulling the um, pipe in behind it as well. It all depends on the power of the machine you've got. Some machines they have to back cream and then go back pick up the pipe and pull it through because they don't have enough power to back cream and pull the pipe at the same time. Uh, you can um, shape, you can turn the head in a particular way so you can actually drive it through and you can actually keep a track of where it's going. So it, it is actually driven through the hole and the operator does have the facility to um, find out where it is and make minor adjustments if it's starting to go off course. So you can see he's got a console there which is telling him where the head of the pipe is. So here's another picture of it sh um, showing the process. So they're drilling the pilot hole, uh, the back reaming and then they're going back picking up the, uh, the main pipe and pulling that through as well. There's a picture of the machine. You can see this is quite a significant machine. Uh, the rods are um, in a magazine there, so he drills one length of rod, um, then uh, puts the next rod, rod in, screws it in, and then just keeps on going. The type of pipe that's usually used for directional drilling is polyethylene pipe because it's so flexible, um, and because it's welded together, uh, the joints are really, really strong. If you tried to do that with a rubber ring joint, when you tried pulling it through the hole, uh, it would all pull apart. So there's uh, the polyethylene pipe is very strong in tension and can be pulled through the hole and is flexible, it can be threaded as well. Uh, another method of installing pipes is pipe jacking. This differs from directional drilling in that you're not sitting up on the ground, you actually dig a pit and then you push your way through. So there is a motorised head there which is doing all the excavating and you're just feeding the pipes in. So the motorised head is doing the digging and the, those are pipes there. Uh, you, you pop a pipe in, you jack it and this thing digs. So this, this is pushing it in and that's, that's um, doing the excavation. Uh, when you get to there with the pipe, you put another pipe in. Uh, you pull the jacks back, put another pipe in. And then you just keep on feeding in pipes and pushing it through until it gets to the reception pit. Um, in pipe jacking purest form, it's actually just pushing it through, but nowadays you often have a um, motorised head on there, or you have people excavating at the head of it as well, so it's like a mini tunnel. 
there's a picture of the pipe jacking, those big pipe jacks. They push it through when they when you, you want to feed another pipe, they withdraw, you drop the pipe in, and you just keep on pushing through. Um, the other way of doing pipe jacking or a similar way is uh, micro tunneling. Uh, the difference is that you're no longer just pushing it through, you're actually uh, pushing and you have a motorised head. So you have a little micro tunneling machine, just like the tunnel boring machines that have been used for the water view tunnel, except this, these are little versions, maybe 600 millimetres in diameter, um, and they just keep on going through. The risk of that is if you get stuck, if there's a tunnel collapse or something like that, you can lose your machine. Um, in the past that's what happened and that's why this technology has taken a little bit longer to uh, become more popular. And there's a picture of a little micro tunneling machine there so you can see it's about about a metre in diameter. Uh, it's got the cutting heads there, it's got the motorised stuff there uh, and then it's also got a conveyor to, to remove the excavated material back to the head of the, um, of the bore.